Okay, hello friends. Um, welcome again uh, to God's Eagle Ministries. My name is Ambassador Mandy Orojo of God's Eagle Ministries. We are seeding the nations with God's word and God himself is transforming lives through his timeless truth. One content at a time. We're one in Christ Jesus. Let's stay one. Evangelism, discipleship, counseling, healing, deliverance, restoration, and prayer without walls, borders, and denomination. Okay, my name is Ambassador Mandy Ogojo Ope. And uh, today we um, uh, continue our series on prayer. And uh, we it's an equipping series. Uh, the Lord said, men always ought to pray and not faint or, or not give in. This was Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And uh, there's so much prayer going on all around the world. There's fasting going on all around the world. And we're seeing less and less of answers to those prayers, uh, especially the corporate ones. And it's important we understand that there are processes and procedures that is involved in the thing that has to do with the kingdom of God. That if you look at the, the Ark of the Covenant and all of that, the story in, in Leviticus and Deuteronomy and during Moses' time, you see that things are done orderly in the kingdom of God. And when they are done orderly, we see fire from, from heaven and things happen all around the world. But today we think we can just do everything microwave and things were just done around. And so this six series, uh, based on the time we have spent with the Lord and seeing what works and what doesn't work, 17 years we've been fasting for the church and leadership since 2006 uh, for church and leadership and intercessory prayer and God has been training us and developing us over the years when we started wearing where we are today. Our prayers at the beginning were all about things now. They're about spiritual matters. We have grown and whatever we have learned we're also putting across the body of Christ so that also there will be a shortcut. You will also to be able to grow thereby but not following through our own uh, mistakes and errors. So today we're going to be praying about the prayer of revival, the prayer for revival in our own lives, in our churches, and all around us, in our nation. And uh, so I'm going to uh, go through this prayer. So you join us, you can replay it, you can share it with others uh, as you will. And um, we had looked at a, a number of, we read some uh, building blocks, some foundations that would help us be effective in the place of prayer. We gave 30 reasons for prayer. I encourage you to go uh, into our channel and podcast or on this YouTube channel and you'll get it there both in audio and, and video and then on our website at otakada.org. And then we also looked at 10 hindrances to prayer. I encourage you to go through that because you might agree maybe out of the 10 hindrances, maybe one is what's just one that is stopping you. And uh, by the time you take care of that, your answers will come like the noonday sun. And then uh, we looked at 30 reasons uh, for unanswered prayers. 30 reasons for unanswered prayers. We looked at six kinds of prayer. We looked at six ways to pray. We looked at 20 uh, 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 reasons for fasting. Okay, we can pray as much as we want. Fasting is another level going and stepping up, so to speak, in our prayer life. And so we looked at 20 reasons for fasting and the things to look at whilst you're, you're fasting and the things how to hear and all of that. Today, as we uh, look at uh, the prayer of revival, uh, for revival, I would like us uh, to pray to commit this session into God's hands. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for the privilege to call upon your name, for the gift of access procured for us through the precious blood that was shed upon the cross at Calvary. Take all the praise and give all the honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit, our comforter, our, the one that is leading us even right now as we're ministering uh, to the saints all around the world. I ask, Spirit of the living God, that you cause this word to ride upon the wings of the Spirit into the four winds of the earth and let it kickstart people, your people, to the intercessors, to the priests and kings that you have called them to be and to do in these times and seasons in Jesus' name. Name, so that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, not just generally, but specific to our own lives and to our destiny and to our times and seasons. In Jesus' name, amen. So it is a prayer for revival. 
the prayer for revival. Uh, but before I do that, we already prayed uh, the prayer for repentance and forgiveness of sin. I encourage you to look that is also in there. We looked at the prayer uh, of consecration setting apart where we realize that we are kings and priests. We are subsumed, we are set apart for God's use. Because how we should come boldly into God's throne to obtain grace for time of uh, mercy and grace for time of need, we have to have a mindset to understand where, from what position we are coming in, from what angle we are coming in. We are coming there to enforce God's kingdom and God's rule as priests and kings. And as priests, we don't just pray for ourselves, we pray for others. As priests and king, kings, we enact God's will, God's purpose on earth in spiritual warfare, in the place of prayer on our knees. And so we've looked at a prayer of consecration, now we're looking at prayer of revival. And uh, we want to play this uh, prayer because it's uh, important before we start thinking of praying about anxiety, about depression and all of that, because this is important, this is crucially important. Because if you can't put uh, the cart in front of the horse, you have to put the horse in front of the cart. But most of the time we go asking for things when the, the basic minimum, the foundation, the building block, we've ignored the issue of repentance and forgiveness and uh, the prayer of consecration, you know, revival. We forget about that. Our lives are no longer the way it used to be. And we think that uh, things are the same. And I, would, I, I actually wanted to read a few words. I was just speaking now. The Holy Spirit just ministered to me uh, what we need to start with. And the first scripture that i like us to, to look at is uh, in Revelation chapter Two and three, right? As Jesus Christ writing to the churches in Corinthian, uh, uh, Corinthian, uh, 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 Turkey. Okay, and this is this is not uh, uh, fables. This is truth. The church was backsliding. The church was doing well in some areas and not doing well. And that's what our life is. That's the, some of the things that require for repentance, what requires for revival. This is, um, this is a true picture of what revival is all about. These are the things that the Lord is would put in his hands on. to say, change here, change there. You're either lukewarm or all of that. So let's just start from Revelation chapter 2. On to the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? This thing said they, 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 he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know thy works and thy labor, thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And has born and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy faith, love. So, one thing why revival is needed is we've left our faith, love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else. I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Okay? Sometimes we're doing the right thing, but we're not doing it with the right attitude. Sometimes we've missed the mark. Sometimes we've gone from where we were. Uh, so our love for God, the way it was, the period we gave our life to Christ, or we've gone, we watered down. That needs to be taken on board. And this is what Jesus is pointing his finger. You re return to your first love. Remember therefore from when thou was falling and repent. There's always need for repentance as Christians. There's something that is not right and we need to be constantly going to the Lord in the place of prayer. And do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of the place that thou repent. So there are consequences for no repentance. When we don't repent, things go south. They go bad. Our health, our relationship, our nation, Things go bad. Light and darkness cannot stay together. And so when God leaves, the devil comes in with his dirty dozen. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when we take the path of darkness, we open the door for the kingdom of darkness. 
and we give Lego as a Lego right for the kingdom to plague, to take, to destroy, and all of that. Okay, and so he says that, but the thing, so I repeat that, remember therefore from whence thou, verse 5 of chapter 2, Revelation, remember therefore from when the, whence thou hast fallen, and repent, and do the first work, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hittest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will, have, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, the church in Smyrna, another church, right? This thing said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which should say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogues of Satan. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have a tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. This is Jesus talking to the church, just like your own church, they are my own church. Well, you and I, we are church of the Lord. And he's saying that even if they need to kill you, endure it. Today we say, me and no go suffer, and no go die for bread. This is Jesus talking to the church before we showed up. He says, it's better we, we suffer persecution for righteousness sake than for anything else. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hot of the second death. And the angel of the church in Pergamon write, This thing seeth they which have the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, everywhere Satan's seat is, and thou hold, uh, hold, so, uh, okay, where it holds fast my name and has not denied my faith even those days wherein antipas my faithful martyr who was slain among you where satan dwelleth but i have a few things against thee because thou hast uh, there them that hold the doctrine of balaam who taught balaam to cast its stumbling block before the children of israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and the stone a new name, written, which no man knew it, except he that received it. And unto the angel of the church. So we're talking about overcoming constantly. Jesus is talking about overcoming, overcoming. What are you overcoming as a Christian? Your heaven is for overcomers. What are you overcoming? Are you overcoming persecution? Are you overcoming anything, suffering, whatever? Are you overcoming uh, um, uh, sin? It is important you nail that down. And as you read through, you'll begin to understand the things that they were overcoming, and the things they needed to overcome, the things they were not overcoming, others were not overcoming. And we have a lot of things happening in church today that does not align with the, with the mandate, with the ways of the kingdom. And unto the angel of the church in Theatira write, these things say the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and the charity and service and faith and thy patience and their works and the last to be more than the first. In fact, he was telling them they were doing well. And look at this. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, who calleth himself herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servant to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. There are teachings today in church that are causing people to miss the mark, to go against God. There are many of them. 
I can I go to a lot of churches and I point this thing out to pastors and leaders because their members can't talk to them. You know, so I write them and I put it there. Some in the place of prayer, God revealed things to us and I would write them and send them to I call some of them, you will know. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against the that you are permitting wrong doctrine, wrong messages, things that messages that cause people to uh, to sin. A great fall in a way is already taking place. It's going to happen where the wheat will be separated from the sharp. This is the season of separation of wheat from the sharp. This is the season of purification. The Lord is allowing crisis in the earth today to purify the sins of all the rubbish that's going on around us today from our pulpit and around our lives. It says, and I gave her space to repent at her fornication and she repented not. There are consequences for not repenting. They are come to behold, I will cast her into bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill their children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which such as the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in their terror, as many as have not this doctrine, 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 wrong doctrine. Plenty all over the place, and which have not known the death of Satan as we speak, I will put upon you none other than body. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Hold fast to the truth. The truth is pretty straightforward. Let's hold fast to it. Let us not come up with all this rubbish going on all over, all kinds of LGBTQ and all kinds of things going on in our world today. Let's stop the rubbish. Let's stop the rubbish. But unto you I say, that says, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Jesus is coming. Hold fast to what he's told us in his word. Okay? And the he that overcome it, if you're able to overcome all these things going on, all this strong doctrine, all these things going on around, he says what? He says, and he, so say, and he that overcome it and keep it, verse 26 of chapter two of Revelation, and he that overcome it and keep it my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So there's a reward for overcoming. God will give you power over the nations. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron as the vessels of his potter shall they be uh, broken to shivers even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that had an, an, an ear, let him hear what the Spirit shall say unto the churches. Chapter 3. It's important I read this because there's a lot happening. And these seven churches depict a lot of things happening around the world. They are persecuted churches. They are churches that are standing right. They are churches that are compromised. They are churches that are either hot or cold. They don't know where to place them. They are churches that are giving in to Satan. You know, and all of that. And unto the angel of the church inside is right. These things said he that had the seven stars of God and the seven stars. I know thy work that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. So you are living, but you are dead. That's Jesus' assessment. It's not what the public say about you. It's not what your neighbors say about you. It's not what uh, your, your members say about you. It's not what the, the organization of Christianity say about you. It's what God. What Jesus thinks about what you're doing. His verdict is what matters. And it's in the place of prayer we can pick this up really quickly. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. You're living, but you're spiritually dead. He says, He, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. He's still not giving up. He said, Be watchful and strengthen what is remaining, that are ready to die. For I have not found that works perfect before God. I have not found everything you are doing perfect. God is all about perfection. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. <clears throat> God knows everyone by name. He says the very hair of our heads are numbered. Every one of them. He numbers every one of them. So if, if you're doing the right thing, God knows. If you're doing the wrong thing, God knows. Be watchful and strengthen things which remain. 
Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If thou therefore, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what I will come. Thou hast a few names, okay? We've talked about that. He that overcometh again the word overcome. What the rubbish going on? He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So it means if you are not overcoming, if you are not going to wear white, it's going to be dark spots all over. The devil sees it, God sees it. And if you have discerning and prayer for God will show you where you're, you're missing it. And I will not plot out his name out of the book of life. Says one say forever save. Here we go, burnt in smoke. The fact that you confess Christ and you begin to act in ways that are not right, God will plot your name out of the book of life. This is major, 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 brothers and sisters. He says, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed. Verse 5 of Revelation 3, verse 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So there are sins that are in dark garments. And I will not plot out his name out of the book of life. Something to think about. Salah. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church of the seven. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shut it, and he shut it, no man opened it. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. I like that commendation. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and wash before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept thy word, the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You see, everything in Mark 9, 40, 49, every, uh, everything shall be salted. Every, salted. Everything shall be salted with fire. Every child of God will be salted with fire. Crisis will purify whatever we know. You can't run away from crisis. You can't pray it away. It will come to test, to know whether you are genuine or fake, so that you know, the devil knows, God knows that you are his. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the world, to try them that dwell on the earth. There's a tire going around the whole world today. It started with COVID. We saw it in 2019, uh, 2020. We did a 90-day fast praying that people would not depart from the faith, especially in 2023. We've seen a lot of crisis going on around the world, not just in Nigeria, around the world. Inflation, COVID, and all kinds of things going on that the world has never witnessed. Financial crisis is going on around the world. It's to try those who are on the earth. So that when we the things that we put our trust in are being shaken today. The things, the government that are failing and the institutions that are failing is a testament to the fact that we should not put our trust in the things of this earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. People can take your crown. Another man can take your crown. People can be replaced and be substituted. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. So he's still insisting that they overcome. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, this thing said the Amen, the unfaithful, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy work, that thou art neither cold nor hot. And many Christians, that they are either hot, neither hot, nor cold. So then, because thou art lukewarm, that is verse 16 of chapter 3, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And how is not that thou 
art wretched, miserable, and poor, blind, naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white women, that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyes so that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Again, repentance. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will soup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, again the word overcome. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I am set down with my father in throne? He that had an ear, let him hear <clears throat> what the Spirit said to the churches. This is Revival 101. You want to hear anything about Revival? Leave the other scriptures. They are important, but this is it. This is Jesus talking. After we've done all the confession, we receive Christ and everything. It's a picture of what is going on in our world today. So we must change. And in Colossians, how do we change? In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, it says, For ye then be raising with Christ. Seek, if ye then be raising with Christ, seek those things which are above. That's revival. The things that are above. Focus on the things, not your house, not no, the things that are above. It's what you see. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Where is your affection? On the things on the earth, on government, on uh, the manipulation of election, and all of that. If your affection is there, you are not ready for revival. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. That is revival. You die completely to self. You die completely to insult, offense. You die completely to manipulation and from others. You die completely. God doesn't bother about other people's errors. He bothers about your reaction to them. If you doubt what I'm saying, ask Moses. Were the children of Israel righteous? No. But God told him to speak to the rock. He hit the rock and he couldn't make it to the promised land. Are you greater than Moses? It's not about the people who are wrong. It's about your reaction to what the people who are wrong do to you that God looks upon and makes assessment. It says, uh, Hosea chapter uh, 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 6. Hosea 6. Uh, okay, let me leave that. Okay, so verse 6, chapter 1, uh, chapter 6, verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. Revival is about returning to the Lord, for he had turned and he will heal us. He had smitten and he will bind us up again. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live up, live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his coming forth is prepared as a morning and it shall come unto us as a rain, as a latter and former rain upon the earth. We want restoration, revival. We want changes in our nation, revival. We want healing, deliverance, and restoration, revival. We should change our ways. In Isaiah 63, we read, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, from verse 1 to 3. Heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. And when the melting fire burneth, the fire causes the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thy adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we look not for, thou comest down, the mountains flow down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, verse 4, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither had the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. Revival is about waiting for the Lord. And when He comes, you will know He comes. The manifest presence is powerful. I have experienced it. Experience it. On the 22nd of April, 2006, in my house in the United Kingdom, the Lord showed up. I asked for it. Three days to the end of the 40 days path, He came in and I knew somebody has landed. You know, the manifest presence manifests. It's powerful. So when we wait on the Lord, especially for that long period, and He shows up, oh my God, you will know you've encountered someone. And that's who He is in the name of Jesus Christ. And then in, uh, in 
uh, Psalms 138, verse 7. Thou do I walk in the midst of trouble, thou will revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of my enemies, and the right hand shall save me. O Lord, will perfect, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hand. You see, in the midst of revival, when we're in crisis, we need revival. When, when God comes, he begins restoration. There are nations where revival took place, and things are growing properly. The, the, the crime rate dropped, and all of that. That's the impact of revival. Genuine revival. Genuine repentance occur when we do that. In the name of Jesus. Then Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verses uh, 23 and 24. And uh, David is saying here, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. That's what revival does. You ask God to do an history of your life. Because we don't know where we're missing it. And as we do that, he comes lovingly and begins to open up areas in our lives where we need to correct. And then he leads us in the path that is everlasting, that brings life, that brings uh, 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 restoration and healing. And then for Psalm 42, what does revival do? It causes our heart to pant after God. We wake up in the morning, we want to talk to him. We're walking on the street, we want to converse with him. We're doing to do something, we want to consult with him. You know, as the heart panted after the water broke, so panted my soul after the O God as Psalms 42. My soul tested for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night. Well, they continually say unto me, Where is that God? You see, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. You pour out, the brother is pouring out your soul before the Lord. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise. The multitude that keep holy day. You see, we keep holy day. When there's revival, anything that has to do with God, we get excited. When there's a gathering of God's people, you get excited to attend. You don't run away from God, people. You go there. You get equipped so that you can go out and manifest in to your world so that we can manifest him to our world so let's go into the prayer of revival for revival now the prayer for revival father we uh, father we thank you for the scriptures that have just gone out we have spoken it once i ask that this scripture will go and ride upon the wings of the spirit into the dividing and sunder of soul and spirit and it will kickstart those people that are hearing me right now including myself that will have read it once let it be re-echoed revibrated a thousand times and more in their spirit man until they begin to see the need for a change until they begin to be the change that the world is looking for in the name of jesus christ amen so we pray now we ask the lord to help us to be observant and in all things in the name of Jesus. That when we're missing it, we will know just like Revelation 2 and 3. They were, we, they, Jesus was observant. So we need to be observant to see are we standing, are we falling? Father, we ask that you help us to be observant in all things about our own life, about the church we attend, about the life of our pastors, about the life of our deacons and pastors and all of them, so that we'll be able to be able to to pray about them, we'll be able to reach out to them, we'll be able to talk to them lovingly about what is missing in our own life and in their own life. When we need to call the church to repentance, we let us be observant in all things. In the name of Jesus, amen. We pray that, Lord, you will make our church a citadel of your peace for lost souls in the name of Jesus. The church today has become a den of robbers. You go in there and there's trouble. You go into churches, that's where you are hooked. They put all kinds of things, all kinds of things going on in God's house. And some house, God's house is in, you go in there and that's where hatred and bitterness starts. Thank you, Lord, for the move of the Holy Spirit in our city in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for visiting the sons of men through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the kind of revival that we pray for, the kind of revival that will make Christ prevail in our land, in our lives, in our land, in our nation, in our churches, in the name of our government, in the name of Jesus. We repent on behalf of our nation for sin that bring the judgment of God upon our nation. In the name of Jesus, we pray against the rise of demonic doctrines and Satan worship in the mighty name of Jesus. In 
our nation, in the nations of the world, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray to break the hold of the spirit of Antichrist in our city, in our nation, in the nations of the world, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your promise to visit us with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we need your visitation. Holy Spirit, come and be, take your place in our nations, in our lives, in our churches, in our leaders, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We come against the spirit, the things that serve as a roadblock to revival in our life. We pull them down in the name of Jesus. Amen. We neutralize, neutralize them in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to give us the insight to know the hour of our visitation. In the mighty name of Jesus, the spirit of discernment, to know when you are with us and when you've left because of our sins in the name of Jesus. We pray people that we pray that people's hearts will be softened so they can seek God's faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remove the heart of stone, give us the heart of flesh in Jesus' name. We ask the Lord to make this our year of open heavens in the name of Jesus, where we can pray and you hear us because we have repented. We have revived in the name of Jesus. We pray for heaven, which is like brass, will soften and give rain upon our nation, rain of righteousness, rain of holiness, rain of your presence in the name of Jesus. And we'll cry for the nation. We pray that the spirit of apostasy be destroyed in the name of Jesus over the nations. The spirit of apostasy be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And we pray that the spirit of righteousness we prevail in the land in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to break the power of the spirit that rises, resists, resists Christ's message in our city, in our nation, in our churches. In the name of Jesus, amen. We repent on behalf of our city for the sins that have brought a close heaven. In the name of Jesus, we repent of them. We repent of wickedness, death, killing of a fellow human being, by biting the sea. We pray for a harvest of peace, favor, and the outpouring of the glory of God upon our nation in the name of Jesus. And repent of materialism, which causes people to withhold what they should give to God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Confess by faith that there is a sound of rain, despite spiritual dryness, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for deliverance from bondage in Jesus' name, amen. We pray to release the grace of fellowship with the Holy Spirit upon our life, morning, afternoon, evening, and night, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to make Make this a time of the manifestation of your power in our church, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray to release the fire of God on all the forces that are hindering the move of God upon our nation in the name of Jesus. Amen. We come against the presence of evil that is opposing the truth of the word of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. We opposing, we pray that is zeal for the things of the world. Be the we pray that the zeal for the things of God be restored in our life and in our church in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because you shall, we shall no longer flee from the enemy, but he will flee from us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the enlightenment of our vision. We command the impossible to become reality in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to start a revival in the land that will break through fallow grounds and result in the salvation of souls in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to baptize the saints in our city with the spirit of prayer and intercession because they are your priests. They are your king. We are your priests. We are your king in the name of Jesus. Amen. We give you praise for the past revivals and thank you because you would do it again in our nation, in the nations of the earth, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to expose every false claim of revival and every man-made revival in the name of Jesus. Amen. We cry to you, Lord, to visit your church and to rebuild broken altars in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray to come and come against the spirit that resists the move of God in our lives, in our nation, in the name of Jesus. And we pray that the visitation of God will produce the divine blessings in the name of Jesus upon our lives, upon our nation, upon our churches, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that the Lord will return the national moral decadence to a fertile ground of divine harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for helping people to discover and rebuild the altar of prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ. Amen. We pray against pride and elitism 
and against spirits that exalt themselves against the knowledge of Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, expecting even greater things from you, Lord God. We pray that revival will result in the baptism of fire in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will rend the heavens and come down in your power, that revival will break forth from the east to the west, from the north to the south, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to help us to move and to discern his, your ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We ask you to help us to move and to descend your ways in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that the true and genuine repentance will take place in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray against every form of extremism in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that God will expose every ungodly infiltration in the name of Jesus into our churches, into our nations, into our lives, into our homes, through the media, through the air, through all kinds of the internet, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that the fruitfulness will follow the move of God that is approaching in the name of Jesus. And we pray for genuine brokenness before God so that you can refresh us in the name of Jesus. We pray for the manifest presence of God in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ, and we pray for revival that will cause the people to worship you in spirit and in truth in the name of Jesus. And we reject the spirit that resists the move of God in the name of Jesus. We pray to break the control of hypocrisy, legalism, and judgmental attitudes in the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask the Lord to give us a compassionate heart in the name of Jesus. And we pray against the hardness of our heart toward the things of God in the name of Jesus. We pray for the anointing for prevailing prayer from the Lord upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for the spirit of unity to prevail among the people of your, our city, our nation, and the nation of our church in the name of Jesus. Amen. We repent for the ungodly lifestyle of the people of our city and pray against moral decadence in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare be obliterated out of our nation, out of our lives in Jesus. Amen. We pray against the spirit of uh, a killing and destruction that is prevalent all over our nation. Mother, and all kinds of uh, of uh, terrorism all around our nation. We bind our spirit of destruction, all our spirit of modern killing in the name of Jesus. We repent. We pray that the Lord, Lord, you will move uh, your people and break up the fallow ground in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, for the grace to continue praying until the breakthrough comes in the name of Jesus. We pray that we pray until there's a breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for the harvest of souls that will accompany the coming revival in the name of Jesus. We ask the Lord to touch the political leaders so that they will reverse ungodly trends in the name of Jesus. We pray to break Satan's hold on the government of our nation in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that righteousness will prevail from the leaders to the governed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your presence to revive those who humble themselves in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to show government leaders their need for Jesus cleansing power in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to open their eyes, their eyes to their inadequacies to achieve without God in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that the Holy Spirit will show them the things that are right and proper for society in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to give them the blood uh, boldness to reject ungodly counsel in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to show them ungodly principles in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that they will be truthful and accountable to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to make them put the nation first in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for governmental leaders who are willing to call the nation to pray. That's for secular opposition. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. We ask the Lord to give them the strength to be good examples in the land in the name of Jesus, amen. We pray that it will pursue the progress of right, justice, dignity, morality of the nation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. We pray that it will seek ultimate counsel from God through his word in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. We ask for boldness needed to reverse the social ills in society today in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. We pray for the Lord to raise up intercessors to pray for remove of the spirit in the land in the name of Jesus, amen. We pray for an outbreak of fire of the Holy Ghost that will cause people to continuously speak of God's power in the name of Jesus, amen. We decree increase in every ministry and fellowship where Jesus is preached in the name of Jesus. And we pray for salvation for those in authority and for God to raise up leaders who love and fear you in the name of Jesus. And we pray for power and anointing to go with the publicly publicly preached word of God in the name of Jesus. And we ask God to anoint 
us, your servant, so that signs and wonders will prove the existence of God to unbelievers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we ask you, God, to, to we pray for our nation to be shaken to God's to shaken by God's power and for men and women to come to spiritual attention in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that the kind of revival of being will make past revival seem like child's play in the name of Jesus. In this last days, we pray that the final trust of the church will capture more souls than in all past years put together in the name of Jesus. And we pray for open doors unto unreached places in the name of Jesus. And we pray that all men who are young and old will be saved in their multitudes and their broken images will be totally restored in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that the Lord, you will heal your church and replace its shame with greater glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We ask the Lord to revive your work in the midst of your years in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for a divine visitation for the churches in, my, in our area in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the churches in Europe, in um, Africa, in the Middle East, in the Far East, in um, in the islands of the sea, in Oceania, we declare in Europe, in the Americas, we declare that revival break forth into all this nation by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the experience of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you know, we pray that the God of Bethel renew the fire of God's zeal in us again. In the name of Jesus, thank you, because in the midst of our greatest challenge, we will, you will revive these nations. You will revive us in Jesus' name. Amen. We ask the Lord to turn the captivity of, her, of your church around and to return her to her former glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We may pray for forgiveness of sin that I may turn, have turned the Lord against the land in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to heal, restore, and revive your work in the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. We pray for a national awakening, awakening that will cause people to go back to the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for the release of the glory of God in our local area. We pray that the Lord's wrath in our midst will be turned away in the name of Jesus. And we pray for a glorious restoration of worship and celebration in the name of Jesus. And we pray that God, you will send the refreshing sense of your presence to our city in the name of Jesus. Amen. we pray that the wind of the Spirit blowing across the world right now will grow even stronger until the Lord comes in the name of Jesus. We pray that the Holy Spirit will bring renewal to lukewarm and traditional churches in the name of Jesus. And we pray to push back the hand of darkness and to tear down the strongholds of Satan in our nation, in our lands, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you, God, for a new wave of the Holy Ghost and pray that your church we speak as a prophetic voice to the nations and the nations of the world. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've heard us. We know that revival is broken forth. We know that a new thing has begun, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the revelation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for revival on all sides, east to west, north to south, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, prayer friends, I thank you for joining me in praying for uh, revival. And this is an equipping series on prayer. I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you greatly and give you peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. May he cause the line to fall for you in pleasant places this week, this day, this month, this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, may he do a new thing that only him alone can do, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, peace of the Lord be with you always. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Take care until our next uh, prayer point. Be in tune. Go through this. Share with others who might need it. People who are praying for revival can go through this and can put up their own prayer, but they can expand it, pause it, do whatever they want to do until we begin to see revival break forth across the nation. That is the heart. Says the heavens rejoice when one single sinner repent. It's in revival that re genuine repentance actually takes place. We want the heavens to rejoice. Share the content all across the world to your circle in Jesus' name. Take care. Bye-bye.